the standards are for the industry. And we're having a little bit of a, a check and balance, or a reality check, I guess, if you will, because of Cheryl, didn't we have one-time costs? So, pardon? Didn't we have one-time costs this year with the food and beverage? Um, yeah, the party, well, the, the plates, the, you know, yeah, we had to I, buy a lot of things. Janice's question is, did we have some one-time costs, which, of course, in January, we got to have the grand opening party, which was all on the club. Uh, that ran about $10,000, and we made about 3500 in beverage sales, so the cost was uh, netted about 6500 That was a one-time cost. We had to buy different plastic wear. We're messing around with, you know, what's what's the right kind of plastic to serve? You know, people complained early on the wine doesn't taste good in these little plastic cups. So then we went to a different plastic cup. That was perhaps a little bit too thin because there's health department standards about, you know, throwing, putting them in the dishwasher. You can't just hand wash uh, with hot water. There are health department standards. So we're still messing around, you know, trying to figure out the right container for the drinks. We had to buy new melamine uh, plates. So we've had some significant expenses. Um, I probably disagree a little bit with Joe in that, uh, and I think I agree with our, our treasurer, Jackie, and hopefully the finance committee. Our goal is to break even. We want to budget, have a budget that says, this is how much it costs to run the beach club operations, everything that's part of this. And yes, you pay for that. Out of your dues, you pay for that. That's how it's set up from the very beginning. Um, prior to this year, that was running about of your approximately forty-four hundred dollars a year that you pay in assessments, about eleven $1 hundred or so quarterly for most people here. Um, about eight hundred and fifty dollars of that goes to support just the beach club operations. Our goal is to try to get that so that. You are paying for what it costs to operate this beach club. Now, you know, you made the comment, if I heard correctly, that um, we're not seeing the sales. Yes, we are. And I think Jerry went through that. The sales are phenomenal. Where we're having difficulties are with some of these one time expenses, which goes away. We're having a very difficult time managing the staffing. You know, there are times when I come up here and there will be not, not a whole lot of people to justify the fact that we've got six people uh, serving. That's what we're working with Glenn and Adam to tell them it is your job to get this right. Now, you know, it is a learning curve. I mean, I'm not, you know, throwing them under the bus because we only have four months of operations. We started this in the busiest part of the season. It opened up in January. Uh, so we are going through a learning curve here, and I'm confident we'll get this right. Our goal is to break even, to set a budget that that uh, represents what it costs to run our beach club operations. It's never going to be a profit maker. This is here for all of you to enjoy. All these amenities are here for you to enjoy. We just got to get the the budget right, and I'm confident with. Uh, we've got all kinds of new eyes on the operations through our finance committee, and we, you know, we're working with them and depending on them to help us as a board uh, get this right. Elaine yeah. yeah. Thomas, Slate uh, Court. I thought at one of the meetings, Jackie had mentioned we had received four hundred thousand dollars from Pulte, and I don't see where that was listed on the financials. Did we get that? Last year, 2016. That the $400,000 you're referencing actually was, was six hundred some thousand that uh, came up in the uh, two, in the audit that was performed. Uh, was it last year? Correct. It was a turnover audit. Huh? Yeah, the, the, the turnover audit. But I can't, I'm it's losing 15, track of time whether it was 15 or 16. 15. 15, right, so it was a, almost two years ago. In that turnover audit, uh, and that turnover audit took, uh, took into account, since the quarry was, the quarry community association was formed as an association all the way back to 2004, I believe, all the way through 2015, 
there were things over that span of uh, 10, 10, 11 years that the association paid, uh, paid for that should have come from Pulte. And that's what that money was, was for. It's just an accounting, you know, to, to uh, figure out the accounting, okay. correct the accounting. Yeah. Um, yeah, once again, with the, I guess the beach club is going to be the biggest problem we have with the budget, Jerry, am I right? Um, Pretty much. Well, it's going to be a challenge depending on the goals that are okay. set. But, but let me just say one thing. When we look at the beach club, and we're going to be looking at it and work with Adam and Glenn and their staff, there's, there's two ways to look at it. It's making sure that the expenses are being managed as effectively as possible. There's also the revenue side, the pricing side. It is an amenity, and I know when you order some things there, it's an automatic loser. Um, so you can also help the bottom line by pricing, which also would affect the whole uh, community. So there's those two sides of the equation that have to be looked at. Okay, and have, have we given any thought to a $300 per door minimum for the beach club? And I realize people aren't here now, so you started off in high season. It's $50 a door for the year, and that would give us a two hundred and seventy thousand dollars starting point. If you and if you wanted to go higher, you could even make it six hundred. And it's still that's, that's a great, fifty dollars a, a month per door. That's a great point, and uh, we have talked about it a little bit. And the discussions that we've had is, is number one, let's get the service and the food and the amenities right before we start talking about it at the uh, minimum. Because the last thing you want to do is have a minimum and then say, and everybody goes, well, I don't want to go there. You know, the service isn't good food's not right or the pricing isn't right. So we want to get a little bit of history behind us, get things down to the fact where everybody's happy, you know, it's, it's a great place to go, the food, the service, and everything is what everybody expects. And then we'd like to, we'll probably do a survey and send it out to you folks and say, you know, what do you think about it? What's the, what's the thought? So, and if some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it, but we'll have to make questions. Laura? Um, a couple questions. I'm Laura Gay, Granite Court. Um, on the uh, county question, on um, your initial slide that you had up there, you had the uh, boat dock revenue for the entire year allocated in the first quarter. Why are we doing that? I understand it's all collected in January, isn't it? Yeah. Laura, one of the biggest problems we have with our budget, it's not a variable budget. And that's going to be our biggest initiative for next year is to have a budget that aligns with when we collect revenue, the budget should match in that month that we collect the revenue. The same thing should work on the expense side. You know, you got Tina ordering all kinds of tickets and things like that and in January, yet that revenue doesn't come in to match that expense until the event is held. Some of those tickets that she buys are, you know, six months in advance of, uh, of the event. Uh, so what you're pointing out is on the revenue side, all the, all the people who rent uh, the boat docks, their charge is due in January, January 1st. So all that income hits the line, yet our budget, primarily, it takes every account, the amount that's budgeted, and divides it by 12. So 1 12th of whatever that amount is, is, is hitting that month. And whether you're spending on mulch or spending on landscaping or ordering tickets or collecting beach club revenue, it's all off because we don't have a variable budget. And that's one of the things that the Finance Committee, along with Jackie and the board, will work on for next year. We want to do a better job of taking our budget and aligning the budgeted amount to the month that it's going to hit the and, books. And I think that a, a lot of the anxiety, and I'm speaking for everyone, I hope, um, a lot of the anxiety is there's a lot of that kind of stuff within um, the slides and other um, financial stuff that comes home to our homes, and then, you know, you're looking at it, and then it just raises questions like that that are, in this case, unnecessary, um, or unnecessary concerns, maybe. Um, further, um, the line of credit, um, I'm not really for it, I'm not against it, but I will say, um, you know, being having two businesses, I totally get why you need a line of credit. Um, you know, we had a half a million dollars line of credit. We got into it numerous times. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we made money and 
good money every year, but I completely understand why you need it, why it's important, and um, I think if you've never been in that position, it's hard to understand and wrap your head around, but I can also see the converse side where it also re creates big anxiety for folks because they're like, oh my God, it's a half a million dollars, you know, that's, that could mean a huge assessment to each door. So I think it's just, it's the fear of the unknown. Um, I think if, if there was a way to maybe present it differently so that folks could understand more of the grand picture of why it's necessary. Well, I think Bill's, Bill Fister's point earlier about understanding our cash flow uh, better before we actually go out and get that line of credit. Uh, I understand the concerns, uh, but uh, we want to make sure we're doing the right thing for the association. And we have a lot of responsible people. We have fiduciary duties to this community on how how we use and spend that money. And with the help of the Finance Committee, uh, we're going to look at their recommendations along with our treasurer and go from there. Real quick, let me just piggyback that real quick too as far as the line of credit. Just give everybody a simple snapshot of the first quarter. You mentioned $300,000, around 300000 in mulch. We have about between January, February, March, our landscaping, just our basic landscaping contracts is about 300000 as well too. Labor for those first three months vary, but as we've seen the numbers, they're in the $200,000 range, it seems. We only bring in basic revenue, just because of the four quarters and we assess everybody equally the same quarter, around $850,000 per quarter. So to make it through the rest, we're, it's our revenue that's coming in from the Tiki Bar and the Q Bar that's helping offset some of the operational costs. But it's such a tight, thin, razor edge, as you can see, just as what we bring in and actually the expenses going out in that first quarter because mulch hits us right away. It's, it's why the line of credit is probably a good thing that the finance committee is exploring. <coughs> um, you're talking about assessments. Is there a receivables issue at all with some homeowners? <laughs> in, in, uh, we do have a collectibles issue. I mean, anybody over 90 days, obviously, we moved forward from the last board meeting that we voted to, uh, the board voted to move them to the collections. Um, our accounts receivable work in the 5% range, which is really good for a homeowner association. But for a community this size with a budget that big, that 5% is still a, a nice cash flow of money that would be good to have in the bank account for sure. Sir. <laughs> Jerry, I have a question for you. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Rosh Karama from Rank Monica. Anyway, so in looking at the Q117 to Q116 on the food and beverage and year-end forecast to actual, it shows a huge swing. And this year we show Q1 we lost about 100 compared to 25 last year and then year-end the swing is so much that we've only, we're only going to lose 170 this year and 200 last year. Can you speak a little bit to what are the details? To uh, are you you're comparing actuals to actuals? Uh, uh, act, well, actual, actual Q1, then forecast year end 17 to actual 16. If you could put that slide back up, we'd be great. Do you still have it? I, I, just, I just try to understand what sure. the swing is. Is your question, we've lost 115 in the first quarter, and that means for the next nine months we're only going to lose another 110? Well, no, I'm talking about the food and beverage. Oh, food and beverage. Food and beverage. That's, okay. that, uh, that's, I got that's you. the one right here? No, it's the last page. Yeah. Okay, because it says it's getting better. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, can you speak to what's causing that swing? Because if you see, we, we, we're losing, we, first quarter it's 100,000 dollars compared to 23. Then by year end, we're about 170 compared to 200. What's causing this huge swing? In, 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 <laughs> I mean, we are losing four times as much in the first quarter, yet year end, we're going to be yeah. better off. What's causing this swing? Well, one, one of the things is, as uh, a couple of people alluded to, is the first quarter is the absolute busiest quarter. And, and I think the staffing, it was an unknown how much staff we needed, and better to be safe than so sorry. We also had added expenses for the grand opening uh, that we had to take into account, and there's a lot of learning curve going on. When we get to the summer months, there's not a lot being budgeted 
or, or forecast on the revenue side, and we're going to have to keep the staff to a minimum so that there's not going to be a lot of spending at all in the, uh, in the food and beverage during the summer months. It, it's going to be very hard to lose much money, we hope, because there's not going to be a lot of activity. But if there's not a lot of activity, we better not have the staff, and there's not going to be the cost of sales. Wouldn't that case have been the same last year? Last year? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you yeah. look at last year from $23,000 loss to, to $200,000. Um, didn't we have the same seasonality, the same slowdowns? Same? Yeah, I, I can't speak to last year. I'm just not familiar with the numbers of what actually happened, so I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm just looking for um, year on year. Right. And, and yeah, the no, I can't driver start. that we have right now for net loss is labor. There's no bigger line in our financials that we go to on any single line. The biggest drive that we have for our net loss is labor. I, I guess the question the gentleman's asking is, without the Q bar, last right. year it lost two hundred thousand dollars. Right. And how did we lose that much last year? Is, well, is your question? Well, well, <laughs> yeah. And why are we losing the same way this year? What are the steps that are being taken? Yeah. To, to cause this change? Well, that's in terms awesome. of what steps, I think the best step that's being taken is the Finance Committee, for the first time, has the numbers and is looking at it, and now we're diving in line by line, okay? Uh, and we also have now the experience of the first three months, and we've met with Lynn, we've met with Adam, we've met the folks, they know what their targets are. I mean, Adam could tell you the numbers, uh, he knows what the targets are, and we want to look at it month by month and now get into line by line. I don't know if there was that visibility uh, in the past. I can't speak to it. Well, so you're saying there might be additional costs that were in there last year as opposed to this year? No, no I'm not saying additional <coughs> costs. I'm, uh, I don't know if there was that kind of focus. I just don't know. I can't answer it either way for you. I just don't I, I just. I hope it happens. I, I guess. <laughs> Tim, there's a guy just wait. I just want to let you guys know. I appreciate all the time and effort you put into this. It's a lot of time and effort. And despite whatever, you know, all the questions here, number one, this tiki bar, I think, is a great manager. And I think my wife agrees. You've done a great job. It's the first three or four months of this being open. I spent the last 30 years of my life, my career was running uh, part of a restaurant company, a little restaurant company. Restaurants are hard to run. In fact, that's one of the things that it's, the survival rate is very, very low. You guys are doing a great job considering what you have to deal with. And if we have to lose a little bit of money to keep that amenity, I'm all for that. I think you're doing a very good job of running it responsibly. You have the benchmarks. You compare to the benchmarks. That's what we should expect them to do every quarter. And as far as the budgeting, believe me, I did that for many, many years. Despite the fact of doing your best job every year, allocating the budget with based on what you've spent in the past, you always get surprises. And you're always going to have variances. And you're always going to be explaining them. And I absolutely think you did a great job. Absolutely great job on that. And you're looking at this, this the best thing that you can do is you put a lot of effort into the 2017 forecast versus last year and the budget. And now we will hold you accountable. We'll see how it goes. That's what you're here for. And I think that was great. So thank you very much. Hey, let me just add one thing, and thank you. If you looked at the cost of goods sold just for food, in January it was like 60%. It went down in February to the mid-50s. Well, do you remember what it was? It was about 55. 55, and in March it was the lowest. And the same as if you look at liquor, so in term beverage. So if you look at all of those ratios, they've been coming down every month for the first three months. And hopefully we are on the glide path to get to the 50% and the 33%. But it will be a learning curve. Well, I think to your point earlier, which the pricing, everybody wants all the menu items at that tiki bar to be reasonable. I've seen the arguments and you complain about, oh, the hot dog's too expensive. Well, guess what? That's part of the revenue and that's part of the, the costs. So if you want things to be reasonable, they can't make a profit that way. No, look, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that if the difference in last year between Q1 and year end was nine times, nine multiples, or eight multiples, 
why is it that like this? I'm just trying to understand what the steps are. I think you should go ahead. I have a little. I have some things to say about sure. that. Sure. The um, right now we have a happy hour for what two hours during every day. Uh, last year we only did it on one day, and, and that is affecting the margins on the, on the beverage. Um, and then we are seeing the margins starting to, uh, to improve from January into March. And so therefore the budgeting that was, uh, that was put into place for the forecast that was given to us by Glenn is now, he is responsible for some of the labor uh, in the way the labor is going to roll out through from now from, to the end of the year. And prior to this, we have not had that happen. So I think there's more visibility from the Glenn's perspective, so it will help us, and that's probably why some of the differences are here. All right. You also didn't have a position, and uh, we have we have more oversight this year in the part of Glenn. Yeah. Two more questions. Yeah. Right. Um, what I would say here is, you know, the, the results are looking very good. I think we have to take a little bit broader view on each drug. You know. It doesn't necessarily have to break even, which is where you can go. It's an amenity. We have lots of amenities. We're paying for all the amenities. I think if you have a good balance, and this is directionally very good, I think we've kind of achieved what we wanted to do, and we just keep going. You, you've quoted a lot of the industry, industry benchmarks of the other clubs, and we're doing better than those. So, you know, you know, might not, I don't know if you have to be that focused on total break even, because then once you start raising the cost, everybody complains and nobody wants to go anymore. Right. You're going to lose them. Right. So, you know, it's, it's a fine balance here. Last question, sir. <laughs> Tom Chobak from uh, Cole. Uh, I've heard a couple of people mention cash reserves. Are, is, are the reserves not earmarked for placements? As we move forward, and not a reserve that you can dip into anytime you want to cover your losses. Reserves are never touched to offset losses. You're correct. Reserves, when in the state of Florida, the way they're built is that it's any type of major capital expenditure, whether it's a replacement of an item um, that you would be reserving for long-term, short-term. So it's a statute. statute. Right. And then I know that mention was made of a. Uh, Reserve study Correct. by a specialist. Is right. that, do we have a We actually, I meet with them at 9 o'clock on Wednesday. They're going to start their preliminary meeting here. They're going to start doing inspections of the community. They're going to start doing a very detailed report for us, giving us a 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 year reserve plan for the entire community and all their employees' assets. And last, are we current on our bills? Or how, how long are we dragging invoices? Are invoices, are we we're paying. Um, so we're on track. Correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ask me in the center. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thank you everybody.